I'm going to be doing something of a demonstration and uh, actually invite you if you want to maybe do it with me and participate a little bit. Um, so I'm going to try and use not too many words and uh, do some showing rather. And then maybe we can talk more about what it is that I'm showing you. Um, but since I'm not going to use a lot of words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I've written lots of books on the subject. So if you want to read some of my words on the subject, uh, we'd start with this one, Being Human. Might also recommend the Entheological Paradigm Essays on the DMT and 5-MeO-DMT Experience and the Meaning of It All. And then this one here is my memoir, Being Infinite, an Entheogenic Odyssey into the Limitless Eternal, a memoir from ayahuasca to Zen. And essentially, I wrote this book because this is my most popular book, Being Human. And I cannot tell you how many hundreds of times people have asked me, how in the world did you learn the things that you wrote about in this book? And so I would tell them, and then I finally got tired of doing that. So I was like, ah, fuck it. Let's write a book. Here, you want to know? This is it. So I invite you to check that out. But what I'm going to be doing today is I want to demonstrate to you, um, I titled my talk, Embodying, I think I entitled it Embodying Non-Dual Psychedelic energies, maybe something like that. I forget what I called it. Um, but the, the catchy phrase for it, or is it Merrill here? Is he still here? Is he out there? He's out there talking to people, probably, because Merrill likes to talk. Um, when this first started happening, uh, Merrill said, hey, let's call that fractal energetic yoga, because he's into like marketing and like coming up with cool names. And it's like, OK, well, that sounds good. So that's kind of what we call it. Um, and this for me, came about um, when I first experienced 5-MeO-DMT. And I didn't even know it was happening, because as Rack was really good at explaining, that uh, when you really go, there's no more you there. There's no more ego there. And so you, you're, there's, there's no you there. There's just the there that's there. Um, so at first, I didn't realize that this was happening. But then, as I watched other people experience 5-MeO-DMT, when they're in the non-dual state, and this is very important, when they're in the non-dual state, what I noticed is that other people exhibited these very interesting movements and these very interesting modalities of use of the body. And I was like, you know what? I think maybe I've been doing that too. So then I started to pay attention. And then the next time I took 5-MeO-DMT, it's like, sure enough. I was like, OK, that was it. So that this, is, this is something that's happening. And for me, the real breakthrough, I was attending the Santo Daime Church here in Ashland, Oregon at the time. OK, well, the first, after my second experience with 5-MeO-DMT, also as Rack mentioned, this, this concept of reactivations, uh, the day after my second experience with 5-MeO-DMT, I was sitting down meditating in my apartment and holy fuck, it happened. It just happened. It's like I just took the pipe, and it just happened. How is this possible? You know, your body produces 5-MeO-DMT. Every single person in this room, at this moment, on this entire planet, every single one of you is experiencing 5-MeO-DMT right now. Very little, teeny, 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 tiny amount. But your body can produce more. And also, as Rack was saying, the state of being, the non-dual state of being, it is not generated by 5-MeO-DMT. It's simply what is. It's what you experience when you get the ego out of the way, because that's all that there is. And actually, I'll, I'll tell you a little secret. The only thing that is, and I, I use the big G word, the only thing that is, is God. It's the one and only thing that actually exists. So that's all of you. And I'll tell you another secret, because there's been mention of time and things like that and calendars. The only time that is of any relevance or any significance at all, can you guess? It's right now. I don't give a fuck what you think about the past or the future about what calendar do you think is the right calendar to lock into. It's now, baby. It's now, because it's you. It's now. It's infinite. It's here. And it doesn't matter where you go, because it's still now. 
And wherever you go, it's still here. No matter who it is you think you are, you're still you. And that you actually is God. That's all that there is. So when the ego gets out of the way, that's able to happen. And here's the thing. The ego, all these spiritual traditions, they're all trying to get the ego out of the way, get the ego out of the way. But there's something really interesting that happens once the ego gets out of the way. If you can really maintain that, guess who wants to get in? Yeah. Somebody else wants to get in. Reality. God. So anyway, the breakthrough for me, it was at the Santa Daime Church, and we were doing um, a concentration. And for a concentration, anybody been to the Santa Daime? Okay, so you know, you've got dancing, and you've got different stuff, and you have concentrations. Those are my favorite ones because it's a bit more interesting for me. So concentrations, you sit. And you don't do anything, which is something I highly recommend. If you haven't learned how to do that, if you have not learned how to sit and do absolutely nothing, give it a try. You might be surprised at not only how difficult it is, but once you actually do it, you will not be prepared. OK? So anyway, I'm sitting there. My eyes were closed. I'm doing absolutely nothing. And you know, this is another thing I tend to find is true. Maybe it's true for you. It's true for me. The most interesting stuff is always going on behind your closed eyes. I mean, there's lots of interesting stuff out here to look at, and you can trip on that for a long time. But man, if you haven't learned, that's another one. If you haven't learned to just close your eyes and wait and watch, that's where the cool stuff's going on, I guarantee you. So anyway, I'm sitting there. My eyes are closed. I'm just sitting my, I'm, you know, all relaxed. <laughs> the energy is starting to go. And this big angular face comes out of infinity, infinity and it's all fractaled out from here to everywhere. And it comes right up to me, and it's right in my face. And this face says to me, it's looking right at me, and it says, don't you want to let me be you? <laughs> and, you know, sure. That was my response. I'll show you what happened next. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and wow, did I not know what the fuck was going on. <laughs> and nor did anybody at the Daime. <laughs> because before long, there's like two or three guys standing behind me like, what the fuck do we do with this guy? <laughs> And I gotta say, they were really nice because I went to the I went to the Daime for a little over a year, maybe a year and a half or a year and a quarter. And you know, if you've been to the Daime, you know the ceremony is very important. Maintaining the current is very important. And that's great. I respect that. But man, I was jacked up like the energizer bunny, and I was just I was just vibrating all the time. And if I were if I stayed in the room, I would vibrate the whole damn room. So they're like you know, so I used to go out and I'd stand out in the forest and I'd just vibrate and throat sing. I'd just be out there. And so they're like, yeah, Martin's going through something. <laughs> and here's the thing, after this weird thing with my body, well, first they kind of said, finally, they're like, um, can we invite you to the next room? And it's like the door's over there. It's like, how the fuck do I get to the door? And here, the, this is the only way I could do it. <laughs> this is not normal walking. I mean, I, was I auditioning for Monty Python? I'm not so sure. So then they get me into the healing yurt. And it's good. There's like a men's side and a women's side because you know you've got to balance out the energies and all this great stuff. And there's a chair right in the middle of the fucking room. And it's like, yeah, that's my chair. <laughs> so I go, and I sit down on the chair. And man, it just it keeps going. There it goes. It goes, it goes, it goes. It's just going and going and going. 
eventually, uh, some woman's freaking out, because, you know, people freak out sometimes. I understand that. I don't do that myself, but I understand that. So anyway, woman, uh, uh, one of the guardians brings this woman in and puts her over on the girl's side, lady's side, women's side, whichever. I'm still in the middle of the damn room. There's nobody else in there, and I'm just doing this, bah, doing this thing. And then the guardian leaves, but oh my god, she left the door open which is not in and of itself a bad thing, except it was snowing outside, and I was really cold. I was like, well, that, that's really cold. Why can't somebody close the door? And so this was really interesting. This was a very curious moment for me, because I decided I want to close the door. And you know, it raises the question, who's that I that you're talking about there? What's that door that you're talking about? What's the subject-object relationship? You see, that's duality. Subject, object. I want to close the door. I was like, well, I'm not going to do the goofy fucking walk to get over there. So I stopped. And I got up and I closed the door. And I cannot even tell you. Okay, the first time I went to Daime, like, and this was almost a year, a year before that, somewhere in there, bleep, I had like a little spoonful of vomit come out. And other than that, I was not nauseous drinking Daime, which if you don't know, Daime is a form of ayahuasca. But man, as soon as I stopped doing the movements and tried to get to the door and close the door, it was overwhelming nausea. And it was very clear, you're not doing something right. Why are you fighting? So I close the door and I go over and I get a bucket and I puke in the bucket and I sit down and then boom, the movements start again. And not only the movements, but now there's sounds going with it. And then there's this woman over here. Now, keep in mind, the Martin character has no fucking clue what the hell is going on. And then afterwards, this lady, and I could feel it, so I knew. I mean, I knew something was going on. Afterwards, this lady comes up and she's like, oh, thank you so much. You helped me so much. It's like, OK. It's curious. So then, it wasn't very long after that when I was at the Wellsprings. I was at the, I was at the damn Wellsprings. I'm in public. I'm trying to soak in the hot tub. I'm trying to just sit in the hot tub. And it starts again. <laughs> there it is. I'm in the hot tub. And man, I, I'm moving through the water like I'm some kind of dolphin or something. Because I just... <laughs> And I'm, I'm not intending to, but I'm like going right up to people and I was like, hey. <laughs> Meanwhile, the character of Martin is like, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? But I couldn't, I couldn't help it. But I also, I also learned, if I tried to stop it, I was going to feel nauseous. It wasn't going to feel good. And, you know, I'm a total hedonist, man. I want what feels good. I don't want what feels like, eh. Especially when it feels like, you're not being honest with yourself because actually you gotta move, baby. You gotta move. So then, when I cracked, and I did, I cracked. The day I cracked, it was like I was smoking 5-MeO-DMT continuously for about three months straight. And I had to move around the house like this. Just imagine what my wife was thinking. What the fuck is going wrong with this guy? And here's the curious thing. That was my new default mode. OK? And so that fi the distinction between normal, everyday life and the full, non-dual 5-MeO-DMT experience, that line disappeared for me. It evaporated. It no longer existed. And it doesn't exist anymore. It's just gone. That was in the spring of 2009. It's been gone ever since then. But here's the funny thing. I'd come here to campus. Yeah, by the way, if you don't know, I teach here. I'd come to campus because this happened on a Friday night. And they're like, all weekend long. And I'm 
you know, like going around the house. <laughs> My wife's like, whoa. Anyway, I show up here at campus. Now I'm convinced before I get here, it's like, this is the day I get fired. I can tell this is gonna be the day because man, the freak, he's out of the cage. <laughs> And oh man. Anyway, I got here to campus and one of my students is like, oh hey professor. And I was like, oh hi. He's like, whoa, that was curious. See, you might have noticed actually my voice tends to sound a little bit different when I'm actually into my energy. But then I'm here, oh okay, oh, I sound like Martin again, okay. And I don't have to do the weird movement things. Oh, that's cool. Then I get back home and my wife says, um, how was class today? It was fascinating. All right, so I didn't need to tell you more about it. It's all in the book. But here's the deal. This is universal. This is not something that is culturally conditioned. This is not something that is programmed. That is not something that is learned. And it is not something that can be effectively faked, as long as you know what you're looking for. When people go into full non-dual states of awareness, and being, not just blowing the ego out, but actually embodied into the genuine reality of who and what they are, which is the one universal consciousness and being that is everyone and everything, including every single person in this room, this very moment that we are experiencing right now, everyone universally does the same kind of movements. And it's always symmetrical within the body. And it's interesting, because when you think about it, how do you have to engage the world as a subject experiencing various objects? If I want to get to my books, where are they? It's not a true question. That's right, that's right, Ashley. They're right here, they're to my right. If I want to go outside, which, which way do I go? I've got a lot of options, right? But you see, most of our engagements with reality have at least some element of asymmetry within it. It's either over here or it's over there. There's very few things that we do that actually have full bilateral symmetry within our being. Yet this is what shows up universally when people go into full non-dual states, when the ego is absent. And not just absent, but the person is relaxed and trusting enough that the energy that is God embodies them, you see. Once the character gets out of the way, then the real thing can show up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to demonstrate a little bit of this for you. And uh, we're just gonna pretend that I've got a nice little pipe right here, and I'm getting busy with that pipe. Now, if you want, I would invite anybody, if you want to you know, you try it out, you can do that. And if you're in the back, you might want to come around to the side, because I am going to be a line down here. Um, and I would also ask that if you want to sort of vibe into it, if you've got any crossed limbs on your body, you uncross them. Try and keep your body balanced and symmetrical. And I'm simply just going to go through this a little bit. Um, I don't necessarily know what's going to happen. It might make some of you uncomfortable. So I just want to you know, let you know that that's a possibility. And it may not. Who knows? It might not do anything for you. But I'm going to show you what it looks like. And I'm going to invite you, when you come to the Wellsprings on Saturday night, which I know you will, to come watch Rack's film about the Sonoran Desert Toad, watch the people on the screen as they're experiencing their 5-MeO-DMT experience. And you will notice there are times when they are symmetrical and they are balanced and they are relaxed. And then you will notice that suddenly that symmetry breaks and there's an asymmetry. That is when the ego is there. And then you'll see the ego will relax and they'll go back into symmetry. So you will see these variations in the way that people respond. But anyway, I'm going to show you now.
Suckle from the breast of the great mother, tingling his sweet lips. Honey tongue, tickled toes. A babe in the embrace of all. Drink, 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 drink from the mother. Feel the love. Feel the forgiveness. Her acceptance. Now, when you get an opportunity to see other people do that, it won't look quite like how I've done it here. I'm quite skilled in it. I'm quite practiced. <sighs> and as you can hear now, it can be a little difficult for me to reassemble my ego after engaging in these practices. It produces a rather profound shift in my energy and my experience. But you see, I do it my best to pull together back the ego persona because people think you're a freak when you walk around like that. And when you talk in a big voice, they think you're faking, right? You're pretending, right? No, I'm not. You see, I'm pretending now. You see, this voice, this is the pretending. Just like all of you. All of you, you're out there, and you've got your voice, and you've got your persona, and you've got your habits, and you've got the ways that you are inhabiting your body through your energy, through your patterns, and you engage in asymmetries, you see. So, Rack used the term, the flowering soul. No offense, but I like the body. It's the body. Everything that you are is contained within your body. It is the vehicle through which you experience the energy of reality, of yourself. All the patterns of your ego are in your body. They do not exist anywhere else. They are here. You embody them. You use them with every thought, with every breath, every sound you make, every movement. That's your ego. Until you learn how to break free. So, this is something that I talk about a lot. Symmetry versus asymmetry. And I'll tell you, every day I get emails from people all around the world and they tell me, Martin, I tried it. Oh my God, I did that symmetry thing. Oh my God, 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 I can't believe it. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. It's it. This is 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 Oh, thank God. This is it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is it. Because it is it. That orgasm that Rack was talking about. This is it, baby. This is what it looks like. You want to put it in your body? You got to learn how to embody it. You have to learn how to be it, you see. You are the energy that you experience. There is no separation. That's you. So. Sorry, it can be hard to come back. I do not normally do this in public. So. When you're working with any medicine, in particular 5-MeO-DMT, but when you're working with any medicine, 
If you are interested in encountering the fullness of yourself, if you want to do other things, if you want to do your ceremony or your prayer, or you want to heal the world, or you want to talk to the machine elves, or whatever it is that you want to do, do whatever the fuck you want, because you're free, baby. You are free. You have always been free. You are free. You can do what you want. But if you want to learn who and what you truly are, if you want to let that infinite source of unconditional love that is ready, it's in your heart, it is ready, it is waiting to burst out and saying, please just let me, just get the fuck out of the way and let me out because I am so ready. Are you ready? Can we be ready together? Come on, love. Can we be ready together? Yes, that's right, let's do it. So if that's what you are interested in, learn how to rest in symmetry. It's just that simple. It's like the tea fairy was saying. I'm sitting here thinking about trying how not to think. Doesn't fucking work. You cannot think your way out of your ego. There is nothing you can do to stop your ego because anytime you try to do something to stop your ego, who's doing that? Yeah, that's your ego. The only way out is to stop and do nothing. And if you want the vehicle to be ready for the energy that's just waiting, it's, I mean, it's, it's this close to coming, people. It's just waiting, it's like, oh, come on, come on, let me do it, yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's what happens, man. You give someone 5-MeO-DMT, it's like, oh, look at that, full body cosmic orgasm, so interesting. Wasn't expecting that. Who knew God was so sexy? <laughs> oh, God is so sexy. Oh my God. So you learn how to do nothing, how to relax, how to be in symmetry in your body. Pay attention to your energy. And when it starts, sometimes there's even a little ego there saying, who the fuck's doing that? Who just moved my body? Who did that? It's like Rack was saying, these little white spermatozoa, and it's like, oh, they're moving my hand. I, same thing happened to me. I'm in the dime, and like, my hand's just moving. It's just doing this stuff. And it was before my ego learned how to fully dissolve, and so I'd be sitting there watching it. I was like, that is the weirdest thing. Who's moving it? It, it happened at Burning Man. It was one year I was walking around Burning Man, and, you know, the mushrooms helped. But of course, I'm walking around Burning Man, and my hand, the whole time for like hours, is just doing this stuff. And I'm walking around and people are talking to me and I'm having conversations. And the funny thing was at Burning Man, like no one ever asked me like, dude, what's up with your arm? <laughs> All right, I'm just having a synchronized moment. Anybody else watch the, 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 the new version of uh, Twin Peaks? Yeah, the evolution of the arm. <laughs> it's an inside joke, you have to watch it to find out. Um, but yeah, it started, uh, I'm somewhat ambidextrous, but a lot, of, most articulation I do with my left hand. So it kind of started over there. And there at the daime, they'd say, hey man, you like working with serpent energy? And I really threw them off, because I said, you know, I, I think it's only God here. And they're like, whoa, whoa, I mean, let's talk about the spirit you're working with, man, but let's not go for the big potato. <laughs> so they weren't quite ready for that. But anyway, this is for me, this is what it's all about. This in my not humble opinion, I'm sorry, I don't do humility, I just, I don't. I cannot find it within myself to do humility because if I were to do that, I'd be lying to you because that's not how I really feel. This is the key. 5-MeO-DMT, like Rack said, that is the star at the top of the tree. We're not fucking around when we're saying that and we're not just all goo-goo-eyed and starry-eyed. It's the real deal. If you've been looking for the real deal, it's there. There's, you know, you can keep looking if you want, but it's a fucking waste of time. It's there. That's the real deal. And learning how to be in your body so that you can be in reality, this is the key. It's just that simple, you know? And it's funny because sometimes people are like, 
oh, well, you know, I got to cleanse my this and that and do the ancestral line and align my chakras and I got to, you know, this. It's like, no, no, actually. See, the ego has a problem with this. Like, dude, that's too simple. It can't be that simple. What do you mean? Relax, do nothing, be symmetrical? Yeah. So let's have a dinner break. <laughs> Thank you.